for me, it's, it's the biggest compliment and it's a big, my biggest simcha that you see that the music, it's, a, it's a, like a different language. And if you're talking the right, um, the right melody and, and you're doing a good music, it doesn't matter at all. I'm, I'm walking in Monroe, in Monsi, and I see like a Satmar guy with all the Shmoyen Abgudim, you know, reach me and says like, oh, Dean Aftali Kempe, thank you so much. Your music, it's amazing. I'm like, how? <laughs> how did I get to, 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 to this uh, guy? But Welcome back to another episode of Inspiration for the Nation. This week, we talked to Naftali Kempa, someone who came from, comes from one of the most orthodox and religious places on planet Earth, which is a place where they don't really have too many singers. Really, they have zero singers coming from them. So we talked to him about how he goes through that transition and the challenges. There was a lot of them along the way, how he went from going, I guess, from being someone that no one really knows to being a household name in the Jewish world. And we also talk about where he draws the inspiration for writing his music, particularly uh, the moment that his mother was on her deathbed and how he came up with one of his most popular songs and, and many other moments like that. This week's episode is in memory of Shimon David, Ben Yaakov Shleima, as well as Miriam Sarah Bas Yaakov Moshe. You will hear about the incredible opportunity that you have by Encore, Encore support, that you should take them up on it. You will hear about the daily Tefillin chat that is revolutionizing the world and how you can come to the free event on September 10th. And you will also learn about Shuvu. You probably heard about them with Palm started an incredible organization and how they are basically bring Mashiach and how you can help too. Now, here's my conversation with Naftali. I'm Yaakov Langer and you're listening to Inspiration for the Nation. Okay, first let's start off and I got to thank you for doing this interview in English because <laughs> yeah. Hebrew is definitely your language. Yeah, and, and I want to start with apologize. I told you before. Um, I'm not a, I'm not an English speaker. I didn't grow up in America. If if I have a, a good accent, it's because I, I I work on it very hard. But uh, I don't have much words in English, so I don't want to sound stupid like I told you before. So I'm apologize if I'm sound like that. Okay, I I'm on behalf of everyone listening. Apology accepted. You have a lot to say. Maybe not in English, but we'll, for our English speaking I will speaking try, okay. definitely, I will try. I appreciate that. Okay, so could you take us back to, first off, where you grew up in Eretz and what was your upbringing like? So I grew up in, in a place called Tifrach. Um, I'm sure that not a lot of American people uh, uh, heard about it. It's a small village at the south, next to Beersheva, near Ofakim, Netivot, mm -hmm. that places. I think it's the most from place on earth. Really? Yeah. More than Meir Sharem? Yeah, it's diff. I mean, in the Shiva uh -huh, okay. in the Litvish Oilam, it's uh, the old community, it's, it's called the Chazonish, Chaz, Chazonishnikim. It's the, all, all the people like following the Chazonish uh, Aloches. It's very, it's very extreme, um, uh, extreme life. Was that hard for you growing up in, I guess, the most um, Shivish place in the world? So it really depends. Um, when I was a kid, it was really fun because it's a village. It's like a, it's like a moshav. Mm -hmm. So we had a like uh, backyard and whatever we need. It, it wasn't like uh, America, nice and and green, but uh, it was it was nice to grow up as a kid. Uh, after which, when I was a bocher, it's it became a little hard because uh, you have to follow, you know, the all extreme community and the rov is really you know like uh, but um i i i went to yeshiva so i i i went out from from tifrach very soon i i went to bnei Brak when i was 13 um after my bar mitzvah so i went to pnimiya it's like I, I i was staying by by the yeshiva i didn't go back every day to my to my to my my home um so yeah it, i mean I, I had um, bad days, but it was it was good. It was good. Did you constantly have a pressure, maybe from your family or from the village itself, to like go down that I guess chazon ish track and like be a part of that? I didn't was ever uh, against something. I was really happy, and um, my father and my mother and all my family they are very 
extreme Haredim and, and really from Yeshivish. Uh, I don't think the Americans can ever understand how much extreme is that? I mean, give me an if, example. Give me an example. So, uh, even if you are going probably to Lakewood and you see around the yeshiva all the like the the really yeshiva sheolim, very you know, and uh, without a uh, lot of money and without uh, that's a quarter to to what my parents was and what Tifa has. It's not like <laughs> nobody has like a, a a big house. We was like three hundred families in Tifa. I think maybe maybe. 30 families ha had a car, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's so different than in America. So it was fun. You know, you, you, you don't know about something else. So it's okay with, it's okay to live like that. But, um, even if it was, uh, extreme, I, I mean, I looked at my parents and I said like, this is the MS, right? This is the MS. They know, they know how to, to live a uh, yeshivish life with, with the Torah, with the Aloha. It wasn't like that you, your father, like, uh, you have to, you have to wake early and you have to make uh, Zman Kishma and you have to, to learn all day. No, I have so much um, um, respect to this um, way to live, to this way, to, to, to my parents' um, life. Their level, to their to, level. To, to their level. But yeah, when I was a Bocher, I started to, to, to be a little different for my family. Yeah, I think that's the, I really enjoy to do music and to sing. I mean, for example, right, in, in some age. So for my parents, it's something that you should not do because you should um, learn Torah in the Besmedrash. But I, I knew that for me, it's not the right way to go. So it's not like a fight, but that's what I meant to, 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 to say. It's interesting, you know, I, I mean, our goal is never to have people listening to an episode and be like, okay, now I'm going off the darach because the guests just said they, they, they went straight away. <laughs> yeah. No, but it's a good point. I have a song called Lev Nishbo. So the words are, you know, the song, so the, the words are uh, Lev Nishbo ve'atzvus uh, eino inyan echo. The words are from Ab Nachman, in Breslau. So he says, Lev Nishba, Lev Nishbo. And atzvut, sadness, it's not the same thing. Eino inyan echad. I mean, Lev Nishbo, it's something that the Kashboch will very appreciate. What's the difference between sadness and Lev Nishbo? Usually we are, we are saying that, we, we, are, th we are thinking that Lev Nishbo, it's uh, somebody that is, is in depression, he's, he's in a bad, um, bad mood, bad situation. But Abraham says that the difference between Lev Nishbo and, and, and Atzvus, that Atzvus, it's about the past. It's about the past. And Lev Nishbo, it's about to look, to look the future. So what that's mean that there is a, there is a, there is a yid that lives and, and always think like, oh, I, di I did bad, bad thing. Oy vavoy, right? So that, that's atzvus. That's not something good because what's, what's, what's the idea? What is coming from that thought? But Lev Nishbo, it's somebody that says, okay, I didn't daven like I should daven. Next mincha, I will daven like like I should daven. So that's Lev Nishbo. It's it's about the future. Mm. So that Akash Bocho very into it because Akash Bocho really appreciated it. So he says Korav Hashem Lenish Berei Lev. That's the meaning. Korav Hashem Lenish Berei Lev. It's not like a a blessing that Akash Bocho says like Oh, you are in a bad mood. I I, I am Korav to you. No, that's not the meaning. Korav Hashem. It's a metzius. If you are a yid that always search for moving forward and you want to daven better, you want to learn better, Kore Vashem, Akash Bochu close to you because you're doing the right thing. So my point is that when I grew up in Tifrach and, and you're asking about my, my parents and how I grew up and how I look at that, I think that um, that that's the idea. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that I don't have to be like them. And the opposite, I think they are right. That's the best way to live life because that's that's how that's how you're supposed to live. I want to be like them, mm -hmm. but I I can right now in my place right now it's it's hard for me. Very but beautiful. I'm not against the shita. Very beautiful, very beautiful. So as you were getting more and more into music, I, I saw that uh, Shlomo Kalbach and so I, I I will say like when I when I went through. Okay, I grew up in Tifrach. And I went, I went to Bnei Brak to some yeshiva, also like very from. 
I was a good bocher. I was a, a good kid also. I was singing and learning really good, and I, I love to learn until today, Baruch Hashem. So I grew up, I, I went to, it's called Yeshiva Stiferet Zion in Bnei Brak. Actually, Abraham Ganyevsky used to learn in that yeshiva. It's an mm. uh, old yeshiva. Uh, so I went to the first Zion in Bnei Brak. Um, at that time, my, when I was, it's called Shiralef in, in, in Eretz Yisrael. It's really, it's not like in America. So the Yeshiva, the Yeshiva Ketano, it's from Bar Mitzvah to 16. So when I was 13, after my Bar Mitzvah, I went to the Yeshiva. And then my mother, she, she was sick for many years. Um, she had a transplant of the liver in Colombia, this, Colombia, the, 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 the country. So, and that time I was in Yeshiva Ketana and I had a, a really bad uh, Tkufa because it was very, really scary. And my mother, after the transplant, she had a heart attack and my, my uh, aunt called me and like, come to my house because she wants to prepare me that the divorce is happening and my mother, she, she's not here anymore. But Baruch Hashem, it really it was really a miracle, and, and she she went back to Eretz Yisrael. She, she she lives for an, another ten years, good years, Baruch Hashem. And uh, but that year really changed me. At the middle of the yeshiva, when I was like fifteen and a half, um, I left the yeshiva. I I, I didn't I didn't fit the yeshiva anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, I stopped learning a little bit and um, I did like, okay, so I, I moved to another yeshiva in Yerushalayim and that yeshiva was a good yeshiva, but you know, in Yerushalayim, it's like a different uh, environment, more like- A little more relaxed. Exactly. So, um, but it was a good yeshiva and I, I, I started to, to, I started learning over again and I was really good. Then when I came to Yeshiva Gedola, so my Yeshiva wants me to go to Tifrach, actually. That's, it, there is a Yeshiva Gedola in Tifrach that it's the most, the best Yeshiva ever, <laughs> but also very, very from and very, so I was a good boy. So I went to my Rabbi, my, his name is Rabbi Anke Friedman from, from Tifrach, actually, but he's an unbelievable Tamit uh, Chochem. He's 95 years old, Shiari Chemim. But, uh, so I asked them, I asked him and he says, uh, that I don't think that it's fit for me. He says, yeah, Yekish guy, you know what you want to do. Uh, so he says, go to Koltele. Mm. That's a place for you. Koltele was a, it's a, it's a interesting yeshiva. There is a lot of, uh, ways to use your time in the yeshiva. There is a lot of Rabonim. Every rov is, is, is like a different uh, way uh, in learning, in, in Ashkofa, whatever. It's like a lot of yeshivas in one yeshiva, so. I mean, they even had, um, not anymore, but they had an American program yeah, also. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 I remember that. This is also, you know, you, 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 you learn in a yeshiva that Friday afternoon, you see all the Americans with the baseball, you know? <laughs> For us, it was like, what are you, what are they doing? It's a yeshiva here. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so it was really interesting. And, um, I love culture. Yeah? I, I did like a lot of searching when I was a boche. So I went to a couple of yeshivas for, you know, just so it's called a chizuk. I don't know in America, but uh, chizuk means that you're going for three months, four months to a different yeshiva. Uh, this is also like, Bianchi, my row, it's always told me like, don't, don't stick in one place. Go, go see other abonim, other shittas, other, go like open your mind. So I did went to Kfar Hasidim Yeshiva. It's a very famous and old Yeshiva. I did, I went to Ofakim Yeshiva. It's a, uh, it's a Yeshiva that makes, uh, Bochim that are Mizrahi and they make them like to became Haredi. So it was really interesting for me. And so, I had like a years, a good years in yeshiva and I had like, Lighter you know, years. Then right. I, I was like searching what I'm doing. When I was like 20, 21, before my shidduchim, before, before I started shidduchim, I felt in yeshiva, I, I was, I was a good boy. I was sitting and learning and, and I, I really enjoy it, but I felt that I have something in, into me that, I am, I have to, you know, I have to do something. I, it maybe sounds like it's not all right to say it, that I was looking to be a star, but I don't mean like, I, I sounded like to, to be a celebrity. That's not what I meant to be, but what I meant to say, I, I meant to say that I felt that there is something that I can, I can be the best 
and and I can influence people. I can be, you know, like. So I and I love music always. Always, uh, music was part of my life. And actually, in Tifrach, because it was like extreme place, the only thing we can do is to do a kumlitz. That was no no soccer game, no ba um, uh, basketball, no baseball. That's that's not allowed in Tifrach. You probably didn't have even concerts in, in Tifrach, right? <laughs> that's no, 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 far away from that. Right. Now I'm talking about like it nothing. comes. It's uh, you know a few people together. Yeah. So singing. every like Sukkot and Pesach, we sit together. There is a bunch of guys that, that you know uh, mm -hmm. play guitar here and there. We always sing like Kalabach songs, and and in Tifrach was always uh, like a guys that know all the Kalabach songs. You know, it was like a, they was the experts of of Kalabach. So. When I was like 20, 21, it, it's a funny story. I, I didn't know how to play, nothing. I didn't know how to play guitar. I didn't have guitar. So one day, a yeshiva across the street from Kol Teure, it's called Gil, the Rosh Hashiva is Gil, Moira Teure. So I had a friend in that yeshiva and the mashgiach in that yeshiva says one day that he doesn't allow to, to hold a guitar in the yeshiva anymore. So my friend has a guitar. So he, he reached me and he says, Naftali, you're in Kultoire, can I hold the guitar by, by, by your room in, in the yeshiva, by the primia? And I will, when I want to use it, I will, I will take it from you. So I says, okay, leave it. So he left the guitar in my room and uh, I start like, you know, I, I opened the guitar and I start playing and I had a friend like uh, a room in front of my room. So I asked him like, can you teach me? So he wrote me like a, a minor, D minor, you know, all the, so I start and after three months, I know how to play. I mean, I, I, I'm still not a professional, but you know, Kalbach style. So I start to go to Kumzitzes and all kind of stuff. And it really is a mashachotim odd. It's, it's, uh, I really connect them. So I started to become like a professional in Kalabach. I went to like the biggest uh, Kalabach. It was, a, it, when I was, a, when I was a Bocha, like 15 years ago, uh, in Yerushalayim, there was a lot of Kumzitzes with a Hasidim of Kalabach. It mm -hmm. was really like, it's like a four hours Kumzitz, only Kalabach, all like it's extreme songs that nobody knows, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, so I really like it. And, and with the time, I became like, okay, Nafloli Kempe is coming, so he knows to play and he knows all the songs, you know? So I don't remember exactly when it was, but uh, one day, it was a Chalma guy. I don't, I, I, I'm still, I, I don't know why he's, he, he was, he, he, he invited me, but he invited me to some Sheva Boches. So he says, can you, can you come play from, for some Sheva Boches? So I says, sure, why not? So he said, I will pay you. That was my first job that, that I got to pay. I was uh, in Kultere. So he brings me some uh, bed sound system. I still remember on, on, on wheels, <laughs> you know. I play on the Sheva Boches. And a week after, um, another guy reached me and says, like, can you play on my chupa, you know? And that's how we start. And after like two years in Kultere, I felt, I mean, I felt, and also the Ramoni felt that I don't fit the, the yeshiva anymore. I mean, uh, you're in yeshiva and you're going with the guitar to play. Yeah. So I moved to Mir. I moved to Mir. And I started like every Benazmanim, I went like 18, 20 yeshivas all over the earth is strong, and, and I play Kalabach, whatever, all the like um, simple kumzit style. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Were you becoming more like, did you look how you look now? Or are you becoming a little more Kalbachi style? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I actually, um, uh, I grow um, like a uh, long hair, long hair. Oh, interesting. Yeah. You can, you can uh, search for my, oh, my, oh my, even on my first album, the picture is with a long hair. So I was really, I'm a Yekisha guy, but I, f and, and, and I really like a straight guy and something really, I, I'm really uh, like Meruba in Hebrew is saying, like mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm waking every morning and on, on, on six o'clock. I'm, I'm, I'm very not uh, the, the, the type of the singers, but uh, um, I, I felt that if I want to be success in that world, 
I have to be, I have to, to, to look like special, you know, if mm-hmm. I will be like a regular Shivish guy, okay, he's playing, he's nice, he has a nice voice maybe, but okay, what's the, you know, there is a lot of kind of guys that you know how to play guitar, what? but when, 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 when you say to the people like, no, 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 I'm, I'm going for it for, and seriously. I grew up like a long year with a funny glasses and, and uh, I walk a little bit like a, you know, like a hippie. So you catch, uh, the people what, love it. Was it was it hard for your parents that they're living in this place and they're yucky and they're very straight and then all of a sudden their son has long hair, yeah. funky glasses? Yeah. So for my parents that they they had a bit they had a like they had the heart with all my situation mm-hmm. they didn't realize why i'm stopping learning yeshiva you know, for them if it was like something that uh, i shouldn't do but um my parents was really worried about my about my my um all, all the situation of comes it says doing a uh, playing go 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 going and playing because for them Kalibach and all that situation it's like something for my father the Kalibach was like a, he was singing for ladies uh, you know mm-hmm. it, uh, it was really for them it was like uh, where are you going mm-hmm. like uh, it was really he was he was scared that I'm leaving the Haredi world mm-hmm. because and I I wouldn't lie it was like a, a certain times that I wasn't like Haredi you know I was but it's not really true. I was Haredi all, always, but I behave with my hair. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. Okay, so we'll, we'll get back to that. But I, I want to ask you, um, I know your mother passed away. How old were you when your mother passed away? So I was 25. I got married when I was 25. Um, and I got married with a uh, Baruch Hashem, amazing wife. And she was your son from her father and her mother. She's your son from both oh, sides. Oh, she's a real the, orphan. Yeah. And um, I was, uh, my mother was sick. And then I remember that uh, after, my, uh, after I, got, I got engaged, so my mother got re- really sick, she was in the hospital. So she called, she called my, my color at the time mm-hmm. and she called uh, Leah's name, my wife's name. So she says, Leah, I want you, I, I want you to, to know that uh, I really want to be your mother, but I know that it's not going to happen. And uh, I think my mother was really sick. And I, I really think that when my mother saw me that I am okay and I got uh, engaged with a good uh, color, she was like, okay, now I can go. Wow. Now I can go. So, so, so she was nifter between my engagement to my wedding. Uh, like a month and uh, almost two months before my wedding. It- it's it's never easy for someone to lose anyone in their life, but especially during that time of yeah. right before you getting married, that must have been really difficult. Yeah, all the situation. I mean, <laughs> I don't believe in 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 in. Uh, I don't know how to say it in English. Anilo have some rachmim alai, you know. Yeah, pity. You don't want pity. No, because I think that for real, for real, and and I went through a lot in my life, and my wife also. But I mean. For real, it doesn't matter if if you have like a, a something happen with your mortgage, or I know it sounds bad, but it's it's really true because if you have a troubles with your mortgage, you are in, in the same problem. You know, it's the same level of of okay, what I'm going to do. You know, it's 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 very it's it's annoying and it's sad and it's so it's it's really depends on at how you deal with the the Nisoyan. Mm-hmm. It doesn't Challenge. matter what the Nisoyan is because Kishwaku gives you exactly what, what the, the Nisoyan that you can handle. So It's I, a good point. I want to push back a little only because like, hold on, you're right. I, I, I hear the point you're making that no matter what, someone's going through some form of challenge in their life and when they're yeah. going through that, for them in that moment, it's very challenging. But there's- I there's, don't felt like that. No, you feel like- I no, I don't felt at the time when, when my mo- when my mother she yeah. was Niftero, I didn't felt so bad. <laughs> it sounds, I mean, I was okay. Mm-hmm. I was okay. Well, I guess you also though had the preparation that you thought you're going to be losing your mother for so long. There was Did no that, preparation. I mean, I mean, but we could also ask in regards to your wife. I mean, she lost both her parents. Yeah. I don't know. If it so was, it was we easy. actually we, we build our home from the beginning. You know, 
And, and I think I, I got engaged with, with my, my wife. She was five years older than me. Mm. So she was uh, uh, 29. And I think because she, she didn't have a parents, so it's really tough, you know, to make the decision to, okay, this is my, this is my husband. Mm. Nobody will say to you, you know, when, you go, when you're going and, and search for color and you, you have, you're going to you date with the color like 10 times, and now your mother or your father says to you, like, go for it. This is a, this is a mm -hmm. good, it's a good color. It's a good, it's a good. Uh, you have a support of your parents. You have a support. And she didn't have the, that support. And so it, it's tough. But Baruch Hashem, we build an unbelievable home. Baruch Hashem, she is a, really, she is a gift for me. That's amazing. Yeah. So much more good with Natalie coming right up. But first, I need to tell you about something incredible. How can you give back to your community and make some cash while you do it? Well, you've heard me talk about them before, the wonderful Encore support. Encore offers big picture, special education, behavior health, and related services that honor children as individuals. They also support families as they navigate the challenges of raising a special needs child, which isn't easy. Encore is currently looking for ABA providers, both men and women, in Rockland, Teaneck, Passaic, and Lakewood. It's an especially great opportunity for Kolo men, Rabayim, base mentors guys, and education-focused career men in Teaneck, Passaic, and Rockland. Encore also has DIR floor time opportunities in Lakewood for men and women providers. What makes floor time unique is that instead of teaching the children skills, the providers are trained to support them in their thinking and learning so that they can naturally develop the learning process. The children learn to think for themselves. All you need to get started is, guess it, a high school diploma, but you get to learn so much about child development and understanding of individual differences. It really makes the perfect internship opportunity for college students pursuing social work, speech, or OT. There's actually a great demand for ABA and floor time therapists. So right now, it is the prime time to get into a field that offers lots of growth, flexibility, and great pay. If you are passionate about connecting with children and really making a difference in this world and want to get your feet wet in a specialized industry and expand your career opportunities, then give Encore a call today. Call 855-411-2273 or go to EncoreSupport.org. It's that simple. Check them out. Go ahead and support them and start the rest of your life today. Now back to this week's episode. When your mother was passing away, that was a point where you wrote a song from, from that moment? On the last Friday, she she nifted her on 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 Shabbos afternoon after Pesach, Shabbos after Pesach. So all the mishpoch came on Friday to say like goodbye, actually, because um, we all knew that she was she was unconscious uh, at the time, and the doctor said it's it's a matter of, of days, you know, hours, whatever. So. I remember also that my father went to Rav Zilberstein, Rav Zilberstein, Rav Zilberstein so, so he asked him about if we should daven that she will, she will get Shaitiya um, Briya. So, so he says no. He says Don't that, daven that she should get better. No, he says daven that she yela tov. She, she should go in peace. Not she, she will go in peace. That she, whatever, whatever. Whatever should, Mashi be, should yeah, be. Whatever should be, be should good. be. Should be good. Yeah, he said Rabbi Yoshif says that in that situation. So on Friday, all the mishpoche came, and I came with my guitar, and we did a couple of Shabbos, you know. And um, after all my family left, I stay along. I was with my guitar, and I like talking to my mother, and uh, I composed the Nigun Nigun Vidui. It's my, on my first album. It's called Nigun Vidui. That's the that's the reason I call it Nigun Vidui because it's uh, for me it was like a you know uh, for my mother. So I yeah composed the, the Nigun <laughs> from for much time I, I didn't sing the the Nigun because it was hard. But now it's it's okay. Yeah, that's uh, that that came from from that day. Yeah, was there okay? So you were saying before that the the fact that you're going down a, a different path than clearly what your father envisioned. Was there a, a time where it was rough in the relationship where 
your father, I guess, was very disappointed with what you're doing to the point of no conversation between you two? Mm. My father is a Yekesha guy. Mm -hmm. So he, he he's not really, um, I mean, he's he's very sensitive guy, but um, I can I can say in English it sounds bad. I, I don't know how to say say guy or my father. My father obviously he is not sensitive person. Okay, but he is um, yekishe, so he doesn't know how to explain his feelings. He's really cold. So I didn't I didn't fight with my father. I don't think I ever fight with my father. My mother, I I. Again, it it does it's not it doesn't was it's not was the like a fighting, but she was really upset on what I'm doing. Um, when I brought a, a guitar, it was really hard for her. But um, I think when she realized that I'm doing good things with the guitar with the music, she was she was okay with that. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, I feel really every day that my success it's it's hurt to feel us i'm really sure on that that she, she now realized that i didn't meant to do something bad the opposite i i meant to search for my place to do good so hopefully she she understand now that's really beautiful what's unique about you is that you're so accepted in the yeshiva world. You're doing concert for yeshiva guys all the time. You're singing by Dershu. You're singing with Yishai Rebo and Shmuley Unger. You have a really diverse stage, I guess, that so many different kinds of Jews are listening to your music. Why do you think that is? You have no idea how this, this is the biggest compliment I'm getting because when I start to do a music, and to put out my songs and my comp my compositions and and I felt that okay, which crowd can I can I can I get? Just the yeshiva shayna, because I'm not a English speaking. I'm not a, I'm not English speaking. I'm not. I don't have the Yiddish also. So all the Hasidic shayim, there is no connection. All the like Americans, you know, for me to 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 come to America. I remember my first time in America. I was I was exciting. Like <laughs> you have no idea. Like I mean. I, I, I composed some song in Eretz Yisrael and, 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 and a guy in, 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 in Lakewood <laughs> hear the song and love him. What's the connection? He doesn't know how to say, and five years ago, I didn't know how to say good morning in English. <laughs> good morning, I didn't know how to say. So yeah, for you me, learned it was English very, so far. Did it, a very good job it, in five not, years. I, I know it's not so. <laughs> I, I'm telling you, I lived in Israel for four years and originally Lotov Ma'od. <laughs> yeah, but I, I'm not inviting you to do a podcast in Hebrew. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, so for me, it's it's the biggest compliment, and it's a big my biggest simcha that you see that the music it's a it's a, like a different language, and if you're talking the right um, the right melody, and and you're doing a good music, it doesn't matter at all. I'm, I'm walking in Monroe in Monsi, and I see like a Satmar guy with all the shmoyin up good, you know, reach me and says like, oh, I didn't have Kempe. Thank you so much. Your music, it's amazing. I'm like, how? <laughs> how did I get to, 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 to this uh, guy? But so this is really my biggest simcha and my biggest asipuk uh, achigadol shali. Hashem, I made to reach all kind of crowds. It's, it's, it's really special. It's really special. I don't know how to explain to you why my music, it's, but I think this is my, my two cents on, on the music the Jewish music world, okay? Yeah. And I think that's the reason, maybe, okay? Except the Tefillis and, and my mother and, and my Tefillis. Um, I think that um, we used to have like MBD, right? Avon Fried, Shreki later, but uh, MBD and, and, and Avon Fried. I yeah. grew up on uh, MBD and on, on, on Avon Fried. I, I didn't hear, I, I didn't listen too much to MBD and Avon Fried. I can say that I, I grew up on, on uh, fit for sure. MBD, uh, MBD for me, it's the Rebbe, but uh, <laughs> um, of, of, of Jewish music. But um, um, we used to have MBD and Fried, okay? So if you look on, on, on MBD's albums for like 20 years, all his, all his best albums, Tommy Basim, Mashiach, you know, all, is that a Hasidish music? Yeah. I don't think so. It's a Jewish music. 
It's, I mean, it's called Hasidish music, but it's not Hasidish. It's international. We grew up in, in Israel with no uh, Yiddish and, 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 and English, and the albums talk to us the same as it talks with the Americans mm. because the songs was... Not Hasidish, not maybe on every uh, on every album he put like one song in Yiddish, one song in English. But most of the song was a good songs, words from the the, the Torah, the the Siddu, the Teilim, whatever, and also free the same thing, right? So now those days the, the the Hasidish music came to the the point that it really split. Like there is the Shivish music, there is no much Shivish music, but the Hasidish music went to the place that it's very Hasidish. You can see like uh, um, a singers like that I love, right? Like Shmili Ungar and, and Levi Falkowitz and 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 Beir Weber and Lipa Schmelzer. It's so Hasidish that the Shivish Oilam and Artist Troll and 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 doesn't know how to. It, it's not it, it doesn't talk to him because if if the if the whole album it's too much Hasidish, it's not for me I, it's not my language so i think that i i realize at some point that there is like a hole that mm -hmm. i i i i have the the zchus to feel all the yeshiva shalom in israel was missing to to, to songs that you can sing in shalashudis you can sing in a kumzitz you know, regular songs, not a dance songs, not a interesting songs, not, and also not a Hebrew song that it's amazing. All, all that industry of Israel Rebo and, you know, all the Israeli, uh, mm -hmm. it's amazing. I love it. That's, that's a real music, but it's not a Hasidic music. Right. That, that's it's, not, it's, it's, a, it's an Israeli flavor, you yeah, know, it's, it, it's, and it's, I mean, it has it's, its, it's good for a concert, right. whatever it, it, you will not see in Shalash right? Mm. It's not, it's not. And even in a Kumzi, it's, People sing it because it's a huge hit, and it, so I felt that this is my place. I have to feel that place, and I think that's the reason my music um, became to such a success. I, I think so, maybe. That's a really thoughtful way of approaching it, and we'll get back to the music. But I want to ask you about your personality. I heard that growing up, you were a very shy person, and you don't seem like such a shy person anymore is that is first of all is that accurate and um almost i, I grew up yeah i was very sh very very shy um when i speak like with, with i i remember in, in the in the cheder right in the yeshiva when i spoke with uh, like like three boys around me i was in silent and if i i will have to say a word i was i became like red and and shaking i was I had a, I don't know how to say it in, in Hebrew, it's a, a pachad kahal. Very like a scared. Crowd fear. Yeah, uh, yeah. Really, I was really scared. And I, I'm not talking about, you know, like uh, go daven like uh, as a chazan and, and, and do like a uh, tala uh, chabura in the, in, the, in the yeshiva. Never ever. I was, uh, so when I start uh, playing guitar, I had a friend, probably heard about him, Shmuel Greinemann. Shmuel Greinemann is from now, he's living in Tzfas. He grew up with me in Tifrach. He brings the, the, the Kumzitz world to the Yeshiva Shaila Menorah Teshua. He was the first. Mm -hmm. He's a really interesting guy. Now he lives in Tzfas. Uh, interesting uh, guy. So um, when I start playing, I, I went with him to Kumzitz. And I was like the second player, you know. On the side, I was like, okay, I will do like... For me, it was a it was a huge help because that that way I learned how to do kumditzes and how to reach the crowd and how to play. So um, I play with him one day, and he knows that he, he always tried to convince me to do us like a second voice <laughs> with a mic, like do a second voice, do third voice, do do like harmony. And I I like no 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 no. Uh, one day he did a sheva boches for a bocher from Ponovich. So he's 300 Bochim from Ponovich. And um, he played. And I came to play at the side, you know. I Okay, I'm playing. Suddenly, he, um, one of his strings on the guitar. Um, snapped. Snapped. So he, know, he knows what to do. So he, he took his guitar. He doesn't say like, okay, and I thought you keep playing. I will sing and somebody will fix my guitar. And he went... At the side, and he says in the in, in his mic, uh, "Naftali, sing." Hmm. 
So I was like in shock, but the pain was bigger than it was. It was more embarrassing not to sing, right? It was. You're so scared not to sing. Yeah, yeah because everybody is waiting. Okay, <laughs> so I I took the mic and I started to sing, and it sounds so funny. But after three minutes, my old fear from crowd disappeared, like from hundred to zero. Forever. Forever. Did- forever and i'm telling you i am the most unfearless singer be- before concerts i'm doing a concert for three thousand ten thousand i did in kiyat sefer and you know when i when i went to kiyat sefer shalom vaksha my manager asked me like naftali are you uh, you have a, like a, a fear and it's ten thousand people are you okay i said like totally yeah. okay and i was totally okay wow totally okay i was in dirshu at the sea of Allah in, in yerushalayim huge like yeah, eight thousand people in massive. arena huge it's also like a, a a huge stress because it's a huge it's a huge uh, production mm-hmm. you have to be it's not my your your concert you can do whatever you you you, you want to do it's like a hundred abonim and, and all the program goes like <laughs> it has to be and all the singers i i, I it's like uh, your singers right ale summit and and then uh, zanville and and and, and moti steinmetz i mean everybody has some okay Diving into Hashem, like, I'm diving also, but I don't have fear. I don't have fear. I'm like, okay, whatever. You owe it to that guy. He he. If it yeah. wasn't for him, you yeah. wouldn't be doing. What I you're doing I owe them. I I actually owe them the all, all my career almost because wow. he teach me how to do it. He he's very good on on kumzi. Says people don't realize that to do a kumzi it's much different than the to do a a wedding or concert. What what's the difference? In a concert, you have like a band, right? You are not the crowd it's not um you don't depend depends on the crowd the crowd can sit quietly and you have the old band they they are doing intros they are doing fin- they finish the old you have a lot of confidence because you have like a band behind you you can do song after song after song that's it thank you so much it was nice good night but when you do a kumzit It's all about the people that are sitting and they came for singing they're not a comedy it's not about you it's not about like to sound amazing it's not it doesn't sound amazing it's it's about the people so you have you have to to be able to to grab the crowd all the time for two hours they have to stay with you hmm. it's really hard it's really hard and in America it's ten times harder than Israel why is that because the Americans are are sp- Uh, I didn't say spoiled. Yeah. Yeah. Well, then we're definitely spoiled. I mean, But in what way? In spoiled? In what way? I, um, I'm, I'm not saying in, in, like, well, we have as, more as like ADHD. Thing. No, yeah. it's fine. I, I don't no, know. The Americans will be upset. I can say I'm American. We're more spoiled. Uh, yeah. Um, no, I mean, when, when in Israel, when we do a kumzit, usually there is a lot of time. There's no food. Oh, you mean like no that? No food. Oh, a kumzit here is like a whole production now. I mean, you got food, the lighting. When, even, even a program in hotel, right? In Israel. Is he doing a program in a hotel in the summer? And he brings Naftali Kemp to do a um, entertainment for the for the crowd. There's no food. <laughs> Now it's a concert. Now it's a kumzit. Everybody's singing and, and, and singing. So in Lakewood, it happens. Sometimes I'm coming to Lakewood and, and there is a lot of yeshiva bochim. It's happening. So And sometimes I, I'm, I'm, I'm like consulting to, to, the, to the owner, like, do the food before. <laughs> like, prepare the food, let them eat, and I will come. And it's the best. It's Why? Because it's, it's just about the music? Because the, the people are sitting and, and singing and not, and not always like, okay, uh, bring me a, you know, a pastrami uh, right. or something. And, and like I told you, in a kumzi, it's, I, I have to, it, it's not, I don't have like a huge sound system and I don't have like the 15 players and, and, and it's not. I have to, I have to bring the crowd singing. If not, it sounds like really lazy. So it's really tough. It's really tough. It's totally different job than to do a wedding or, or to do a, I mean, in wedding also there is in, in, in the dancing part, you have to, you know, bring energy to the crowd right, always. Right. So it's the same in a kumzit, mm-hmm. but concert, it's much easier. Interesting. We'll be right back this week's episode, but I want to tell you about two incredible opportunities in your life. First, I need to tell you about how my life has been changed forever. It's called Daily Tefillin. I'm part of a WhatsApp group that every single day I take a picture of myself wearing my tefillin, obviously not on Shabbos, and I am in a group of so many people, so many people that have either 
worn tefillin like maybe by the bar mitzvah and that's it. Or people that like grew up orthodox and they slowly just felt that their connection wasn't as strong and maybe they went ahead and got tattoos or just disassociated from Judaism as a whole. And they're on that group and you have a bunch of yeshiva guides also. And for me personally, being on this tefillin group, this chat, I feel a part of this community. I feel an extra special connection to this mitzvah. Well, what's why am I telling you all of this? Well, September 10th, the Daily Tefillin Chat is throwing a party and you're invited in the American Dream Mall. And by the way, it's free. Getting a concert from Eitan Katz, being a beautiful davening, starts at nine and there's a whole entire program. There's also gonna be a free pass to the water park for men only, obviously. There's gonna be yummy food, party, dancing, singing, celebration, and what better time of year to do this than Elul, where actually it stands for Ani Lidodi Vododi Li. Hashem is here in the field and we want to connect to him. So go ahead and go to dailytfillin.com to register. We want to see you again September 10th. We want you to be there. Even if you're not in the group yet, we want you to come and be and just party it up. Again, it's free. It's a Sunday. Bring your sons. It's going to be a blast. And if you did not go ahead and ch check out our chat yet, Go ahead. I'm going to have a link in the show notes. We want you to join that. We have a Nishmas chat for women. Don't worry, we haven't forgotten about you. There's a Moda'ani chat for men. There's a Moda'ani chat for women. Every day we do a voice note saying Moda'ani. This is the time to connect and we want you there. So go come ahead September 10th, register first and join the revolution changing my life and honestly changing the world. Also, I want to tell you about Shuvu. Over 30 years ago, Shuvu was started by Rav Palm, and it has been a force of nature ever since. Shuvu basically are schools along, if you're watching this, you can see a, cha a chart to see like over 57 schools around Israel that is providing the children with wonderful and stellar education and helping them reconnect to their Jewish roots. But more than that, Rav Palm had such an incredible vision. He knew that people coming in said, okay, I don't want to just be connected to uh, religious studies. I I'm not going to send my child to a school where they're not getting the proper education. Well, Shuvu has a heavy focus on education to the point that they have won awards for uh, giving incredible classes on science and math. So when it comes to education as a whole, not just spiritual education, but education as giving children tools for life, Chuvu has done an incredible job. They are right now uh, just starting off a, a campaign and you could donate to help send a child and, and reconnect them. And what's, what's beautiful about Shuvu is there are children that, that have no connection to Judaism. They go and what happens is their entire family gets invested in returning to Orthodox Judaism and really understanding the ways of Hashem and the Torah. And it really transforms entire families. There's entire communities that whenever you've gone to Israel, they may have looked at you as like, I don't want anything to do with an Orthodox Jew. But as they understood what Shuvu is doing and their kid is in school, and they're like, wait a second, there's actually a lot of beauty and a lot of depth there. And it is changing the Israel world. And if you're an American that you visit there, there's been countless times, I bet you, that you've gone to communities that has been affected by Shuvu. So many thousands of children that their lives are changing and their families are changing to connect to Judaism. And you could go ahead and support the children. Yes, the government gives some money, but that does not count towards the massive budget that they have. And they need to, we need to help our brothers and sisters out. So go ahead, go to charity.com slash Shuvu. There'll be a link in the show notes. Go ahead and donate. By the way, like every beautiful campaign, it's being matched. So if you give $1,000, let's say you say, I think it's around $2,000 to support a kid for a year. If you give $1,000, you are going ahead and supporting a child, learn and reconnect to Judaism. And then for generation after generation after generation, they will be connected to Judaism. Amir Shem, and that will be to your credit. So go ahead and give $1,000, which will translate to $2,000. If you can't give $1,000, give $100. Give $118. It will just double. Give $10. Give whatever you can. This is a beautiful beautiful campaign and it's over 6,000 children, over uh, 57 uh, schools. There's there's like three boys in Italian just this year that um, this year they transitioned from Shuvu and they're going to a typical yeshiva, which is just beautiful. There's there's girls that have gone there that they transitioned to Beis Yaakov. It, it's really incredible. And they're raising $2.4 million. Why? Because in the past year, the attendance has gone up by 20% and they need your help. You are going ahead and helping Klal Yisrael. You're going to help bring Mashiach. Go to charity.com slash Shuvu and change a kid's life, but more importantly, change the world today. Now back to this week's episode.
So I, I heard that you carried the Gruz letter around for a few years before you came up with a song for it. Can you, can you give context to okay. what, what that so, story is? <laughs> you're making it dramatic again. <laughs> um, so no, the story was that I have I have a song, Hemda Skoli Story, called, and on my second album, Ono Eilich. And uh, the composer of the song was Yossi Green. The story was, I was in Frankel's show in, 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 Flatbush. in Flatbush. Yeah. He's my brother-in-law lives there. So I was, I, I, I dove in the show. And is then, before they did Frankel's over or after they did, they did Frankel's over? What do you mean over? Oh, like they made it nicer. Oh, it's actually my brother-in-law did the old, oh, the really? old kind of job. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. nice. Good, good job. job in, in good the job, show. Good job, brother-in-law. Yeah. Um, so. You're in Frankel's show. So I, I was in Frankel's show davening. And at that time, it was like maybe two years after I started to come to America, like oftenly for, for a job. For, and I live in Yerushalayim, in an apartment, in a building. And always when I came back from, from New York to, to, to Yerushalayim, I always says to my wife, you know what? It's, it's hard for me to appreciate it, the fact that I'm living in Israel. I really, I, really, I mean, for 2000 years, my, my father's right, dream to live in Yerushalayim, dream to see Yerushalayim for one time. And I live in Yerushalayim, seven minutes, seven minutes from the Koiso. And you know what? I, I, I may, maybe I, I, want, I, want, I want to live in New York. I will have a huge house in, in Thames River maybe <laughs> with a pool, with a really huge space for my kids, a lot of, and, and Lakewood, it's, a, it's the best place for, for yeshiv. I have chadorim and yeshivas, whatever I mean, whatever I mean, I mean it, and, and the both sides, like the Oilamaza side and the Oilamaba side. Right. Why I live in, in, in like a hundred meter uh, apartment in Yerushalayim? It was hard for me, really hard because, so at that time I had some rough that I, I, I went to his shiurim and he's really, he's, he lives in the, in, in the old city. And he is like the, he's Ishi Yerushalayim, that's his name. He's really into Yerushalayim. So I was making like, all the time, I was like, what about Yerushalayim? What, what's, the, what's the biggest thing, thing about Yerushalayim? What, what is Kedusha Samokim? What does mean? Why, why I, can, I can be a good um, Jewish guy keeping the old mitzvahs in New York? Well, what's, what's, what's the, the, like, my Yan, what, what's the deal in, in a place, Yerushalayim? What's, what's the, so, when I came to New York one time, I, I went to Frankel's show and I opened the Cedar before the Zen, and there is a Gera Saramban on the, on the beginning of the Cedar, there is a print, the, they print the Gera Saramban. So I saw on the Gera Saramban, says, Vani te'ilo lo keilis borach, noise ala oretz akdoisha, shakoil metzapin li roiso. Chemdas kol Israel, chemdas Hashem is borach, kolo el yoinim, something like that that's the words not uh, accurate but so the words mean that a Goen wrote this letter to his wife and and his daughters before he went to Eretz Yisrael and he wrote a letter that that says to him how to behave you know all kind of uh, um, do and not to do so he's he's finishing the he's finished the, the letter with those words that Vani, I am I am going Baruch Hashem to Eretz Hakodesh. That every everybody is everyone everybody is 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 looking to 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 see Eretz Yisrael and it's Chemdas Kol Yisrael and Chemdas Hashem is Baruch Hakodesh Baruch Hu happy with Eretz Yisrael. Baruch Hashem. Vani no Yisrael leSholem. That's that's the end of the of the letter. Baruch Hashem. So the story was that the Goen finally. He didn't. He didn't make up. He didn't. He didn't. He never got it there. He never got there. there is a famous saying from uh, Reb Chaim Valozhina. He is telling me that he says that Kodesh Baruch doesn't let the Goyen Mevinne to go to Eretz Yisrael because if the Goyen will make it and he will come to Eretz Yisrael, the Moshiach will has to come, and it's not the time yet. So the girl was got sick and he died. Who niftar? So. I, I saw that, that that words and it's like oh my gosh that that's it's amazing it's amazing words for me I mean I'm I'm I felt that like I I work on my feelings about Yerushalayim and about Eretz Yisrael so at that night my schedule was a meeting with Yossi Green because he he reached he, he met me on some place and he says come to me let's do something together 
and he is uh, he's the most amazing person in the music world really so you know he's he's much older than me and he has much experience than me but he was so you know like come to me let's do something together so i came to yossi and he says you have certain words that you want you want uh, you want to compose together so i says listen yossi i just found the words that really connect my situation i explained to him like you live in in america i live in Jerusalem. you know he was really like wow these are good words and he composed the song on the spot so i i took it and it's uh yeah i love the song and he is an amazing composer so yeah yossi green is the man yeah, He's well, awesome. so, so that's the story on the on the i love it's it. not it's not for many years it's for many many minutes <laughs> um so you just came out with another album now. What do you look for to do when you're coming out with another album? What angle? Okay. Like, what's the That's focus? That's a very there? good question. Um, so, after my first album, when I came with my first album, I thought maybe I, I tell Itzy and Ellie, Itzy Berry and Ellie Klein, they they made they made all the music for me. Um, we 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 actually learned together in Kultura, and then I I went with Ellie Klein to Mir. It's a longer rela- relationship. Um, so. When I did my first album, it was the idea that I have a good songs. I think it's a good songs. Actually, you know that before my first album came out, Liyachad um, Shmo, one of the songs in that album is Bavura Biseno. I think it's one of the most popular songs for my songs. Bavura Biseno. There is no one yeshivish guy in the whole world that doesn't know the song now. But I put out the song as a single five months before the album came out. And it was sitting in the YouTube <laughs> with 300 views. <laughs> Nothing. I was like, okay, whatever. I thought it's a good song, but it's not. Okay. So my, I meant like with, with the first album, I told like Ellie and Nitsi, let's do a, a, a album with the songs. Maybe the Shiva Bochim in, in Israel will know some of the songs because I'm putting an album. So everybody is listening, you know, it's interesting. Let's see. So maybe they will know like two songs from the album. And at the summer, at the concerts and at the events, I will have another two songs to sing. And it's, you know, it's nice. So the album came out and like two, three days after the album came out, I realized that something is happening because I was hearing my, my album in, in the radio and, and I, I start to, I was like a this guy. No, nobody's reaching me and says like, oh, that, that, you know, like response and stop me at the street. And it starts right away and very fast. So I went to Geula and like every day, oh, wow, we love your album. We love your album. Uh, that song, I did you compose the song? Can I take a picture? So I realized that I'm, my album is is a total success, Bo Hashem. And also I saw on this, you know, that I did the distribution mm-hmm. for my album with Shankis, right? In Israel, yeah. there is Shankis. Sure. So um Shankis told me when I when I when I spoke with him on the album, can can you uh di- distribute my album? He says, I mean these days the albums are not so popular, the CDs and the uh, so he says Listen, you're a new singer. I don't know you. I don't know your songs. It sounds to me very like um, loco, uh, Israeli, yeshivish. I don't think that it's worth for me to to you know to print the cities and, and invest money. So I told them I will pay. So I paid for the for the for printing my albums by my cities. It wasn't so much money, but I printed like a three thousand pieces of cities. And uh, so I, I came with the boxes to him in my car. <laughs> no, nobody's. So I came to him and I says like, okay, take the CDs, take whatever percentage you want. Just do the job because I want, I, I want the chance that the people will have the, the CDs. So also about three, four days after the album came out, he called me, <laughs> Mayor, and he says, Naftali, I think I think something is happening because I sold almost a f- 500 pieces. It was like like a week after. Wow! So I realized that something is happening, and Ellie Klein, one of my best friend for many many years, so he on the spot realized that the album is Bo Hashem uh, successful. So he connect me with Shalom Vakshal, my manager. He on the spot he says to me like, "You want to translate 
the success of the album you have to to reach up um, on a good guy that he has experience that he can translate the the success of the album to a good jobs and and brings you to 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 the next level um so I reach Alan Vakshal and we close to to work together and yeah that's it so that was the first album so you asked him about so after my first album is it was so successful I I was on my second album I was always thinking like how can I make another first album you <laughs> know so I was looking on, on the okay Bavura Vizeno I have to do a song like Bavura Vizeno <laughs> and I have Kola Nechalim I have to do a song like Kola Nechalim you know that sit on the same a kumzit Israeli flavor or something. Uh, and I have Betsy Israel, I have to do something from the Davani, from Halal or something. Um, so that way, and it was really st- stressful. Like, I, I felt like, oh, I have to, you know, to, to stand on the uh, la tzipiot. But I think now my biggest, um, my avoda achi kasha v'mitzad shani, a good work, it's to do an album without thinking what was it in the about past? the past the future i don't care i'm all around the, the 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 year making songs on the way here i made a song in the car really yeah so i don't know if it's a good song but i hope i mean maybe <laughs> no, i'll get a taste of it and I'm, so and i'll brag like yeah that song he wrote <laughs> on the way to inspiration for the nation the, yeah the yeah. inspiration was the inspiration for exactly this song. exactly interesting so, when it comes to music, I am not the opposite of a Talmud Chacham. Um, but what's what's the creative process like when you're creating a song? Does it just come to you? Are you thinking of an idea? Are you thinking of a pusik? So actually, there is no rules. It's but for me, the biggest the biggest job my job is to find good words that they have a chiddush. They have like something new inside, n- new idea, and a good word that's speaking to most of the people. Um, after you have the, the the words, the the composition, and it's it's. I, I would not say easy, but that's the easy part. At the at the. But but yetsira. Do you ever get like or look for feedback from other singers like Shmuel Younger, Yishai Rebo? You're like, hey, by the way. What do you think of this song? Or is that too is that weird? Is that like socially off to do in the music world? Um no, it's 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 actually very not. Um I I I don't reach uh, other singers because I mean if I have a good song and I know it's a good song, I know it's a good song. Mm-hmm. I don't need I don't need the I mean you need Siata de Shmaya and you need the but when you when you do it for um, like Two or three years, you know your crowd. You know, you know to how to. Kilo le le, atayodei ech li istakel al ze ech leavin ma tov ma lo. It's not a comparison, but I guess it is because I kind of know what you mean. Because I mean, we we have uh, Yoni here who's on the team. Like we we speak about it. Like we kind of know at the point. Like what kind of guests we want to get. There's so many names and ideas that come for an episode. We kind of have it like an intuition of like, okay, we know this person is going to make a good episode. Like I don't need someone calling me a thousand times. So why didn't you bring, bring me? Why didn't we bring you? Yeah. Why did we bring you? Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, because we you made a great episode. <laughs> this is a good episode. You don't think this is good? I don't know. I'm really scared about my English. No, it's very good. It's very good. I mean, I meant to, listen, I speak better English than you, but you yeah. you totally gave off before we started that you're going to say like three words. This was like pretty flawless. Okay, I understand maybe your vocabulary isn't perfect, but you conveyed whatever your message is. And okay, maybe that's I'm a, happy to hear. I'm maybe a, that's a good mean, a message for, for what you're saying here because it's not necessarily about necessarily the words. It's really just the people being able to connect to what you're saying in yeah. the way that you're- You know that okay. actually my my toughest uh, thing in, in jobs in America, I can do small talk, I, I don't I don't have fear to, to do small talk, but you know, when, when you're standing in front of like a hundred people that coming to the Kumsit, it's very tough for me to speak English because in, in Israel, everybody knows that my concerts are filled with 
uh, I, I'm talking a lot mm-hmm. compared to, compared to, to, uh, to the to most of the singers I'm I'm talking a lot I have almost every like three songs I have like a akdome to the song mm. and I have um, I have like words on the on Kola Nechalim explanation on the words and and I have a song Magina Shabbat Midrash so I'm telling the story why I wrote the song and I have Bavura Vissainu why I composed the song what's the what's the story so I had like a, a very a unbelievable word that I used to say on Bavura Vissainu words and that the reason I composed the song so I'm saying all that in in, in a concert and, I think and, you're making a huge mistake You should talk, and then I get it. I understand the fear of like looking dumb, but yeah. people, it's fine. You grew up in like the most yeshivish place in the world and your English, I think, yes, it's not perfect, but it, I think it adds so much, it adds so much soul to a Kumzitz, a concert, yeah. when you give that little yeah. prep before. I, I agree, I totally And also, agree. you know what, I, I, I interviewed him and I think it's it's like endearing, like Rav Nissen Kaplan. He, it's known that he makes so many funny English mistakes, but it kind of became like a shtick at this point. And I think he even knows at this point when he's making like those I, mistakes. I don't want to, I, I don't want to become a, a, a joke. No, but, no, but I, I realize But But it, it, yeah. I think it's something endearing. And I think, I think also I people like will forgive you for that because they're like, it's part of who you are. Yes, you're from Israel. So of course. Okay, please forgive me. <laughs> And so I, I know you know what I want, like in 20 years when people are like, Kempa blew up even more because he actually gave the preparation before in America when he spoke. And you'll be like, on the next podcast, he's like, I owe it to Yaakov Linger because up until that moment, I was very scared to do it. But the first time I did it, <laughs> it just really worked out. Um, I want to finish off with one question and then let's finish off with a song. My, my question is, what advice would you give to Naftali Kempa when he was 10 years old or, or 15 years old and he's trying to figure out his place and how he's going to navigate the world. And it's it probably seemed like, hey, I don't even know where things are going to end up. And I think right now you look back and you've come a long way. And what advice would you give your younger self? To understand that the difficulties in life and the nisyoyness that you have, it's not nisyoyness in life. It's not difficulties in life. That's the life. That's life. If a guy think that his life will be without Nisyoness and suddenly the Nisyon has come, the problem is, the problem is, 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 is come. And he says, oh my, oh, why, why, why Hashem giving me that Nisyon? Why Hashem giving me that success? Why Hashem giving me? It's like, this is life. The, the waves, that, that's how life, that's how the life, Kacha So when I, I realize Chaval shelo evanti it lefnei that this is life, this is life. And when you have, when I start to sing and when I start to to put out music, it was, I I was in a very low point in in my career. I was a kumdis guy. I went to almost every yeshiva. Okay, everybody knows me. Now what? And I didn't have money. I didn't have a um, job to do. You know, and and I knew that this is what I want to do, but. I have no I have no no direction to go and suddenly things start to be good but um, I, I would love to to speak with Naftali Kempe when I was 15 or 13 and says this is life don't don't be scared from life because that's life everybody has their own package on 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 the back on their back so don't don't that's life beautiful okay could you share with us a song you could choose the song any song it could be the song you're making up on the way here it could be a song that you're just feeling in the moment okay i will sing uh, ono eilech that's uh, a song and i i composed ono eilech it was the beginning of the covid and um everybody i mean everybody in the world but for us the singers there was no concerts there was no so i i, I remember speaking with shalom Vaksh, my manager and i said something like do you understand there is there is there is maybe we will we will not be able to sing anymore maybe i mean it, at the beginning was, right no one knew no one knew so <laughs> Baruch Hashem, now it's a history but uh so i composed on Eilech. uh i was in in purim in la in los angeles and El al call us uh right after Purim. he says tonight it's the last uh plane that leaving la straight to israel please come because we're supposed to go to new york afterwards so we went to the to lax to the airport the airport was empty totally empty i was with ellie klein 
empty, totally empty. And, and, and every employee in, in, in the airport, like, saw us and like, you know, everybody's is running to the, to the other side. And, um, I remember sitting at, at the gate, nobody was there. And, uh, I told Ali Klein about, uh, Ono eilich meruchecho, the words are Ono eilich meruchecho ve Ono miponecho evrach. He mesak shamayim shomoto ve atzir shoilneko, meaning that Akadish Bochu is everywhere. You cannot run from the Akadish Bochu. So I said to him, like, listen, we are in LAX in LA. It's the most, like, you know, craziest city in the world with all the celebrities, whatever. And Akadish Bochu in one thing, one little thing that you cannot see even, um, sh- shut off the world. And, uh, and I sit on the on the bench and I and I and I start to like and I compose a song. And yeah. Okay. So I, I, I'm choosing that song because I think that's you know mevate et kola et kola shelanu. Ono eile meiruchecho veono mi ponecho evra. Ono eile meiruchecho veono mi ponecho evra. Ono Imesak shomayi shomoto veyatsiyo shiyoy lineko Oy 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 shomoto Oy 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 lineko Naftali Kempa, thank you very much. Thank you very much to you. And uh, really, it was a honor for me to participate in that uh, podcast. And hopefully it will came out nicely. I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm scared about my English. No, it's, it's good. And uh, you know what? Anyone listening, they should leave in the comments how awesome your English is. Okay. Thank you so much for watching this week's episode. If you got this far in this week's episode with Naftali, I want you to say how incredible he is. So say the word incredible. You could also mention in the YouTube comments how his English is way better than he's saying. I mean, he's only learned English in the past five years. He's doing a very good job. I mean, on the flip side, my Hebrew is is terrible comparatively to his English. And I had a lot of time in Israel and I had a lot of time growing up learning Hebrew. So I think he's doing a great job and I want you to support him as well. If you haven't yet gone out and check our sponsors, go ahead and go go donate to Shuvu, charity.com slash Shuvu. They are, what they're doing is changing the world and you could help and be a part of it. You could be an inspiration for the nation. And if you haven't yet registered to go to the September 10th event with Daily Tzvillin, you could go and go to the link in the show notes. You could join any of the WhatsApp groups, whether uh, it's the Modani boys group, Modani girls group, obviously boys go to the boys group and girls go to the girls group. You guys get it, you know it. Or joining the Tzvillin chat or joining the Nishma chat, go ahead and get involved. The, the world is changing and you are invited to be a part of it. And last but not least, 
least go ahead and check out Encore Support if you're in the New Jersey area, maybe if you're in New York area and you want to get involved in, in so many things that they're doing and get paid well and work in such a good environment, go to Encore Support. And if you enjoyed this episode, go ahead and share this with a music lover. I particularly think music lovers will be obsessed with this episode. There is so much depth to Naftali and I, I, I'm excited to interview him in like five years from now. Uh, his English will be 10 times better and I think he will be I, I think he's gonna have a global effect you know like Miami Boys Choir got it got very popular on TikTok I think I don't know if Tali Kempa in like China Japan I, I feel like in Asia like he'll he'll blow up um I don't know just a feeling I have share this episode with anyone you think would enjoy it rate us five stars and get ready for incredible stories of Chuva coming up next week and the week after Till next time, you can be inspirational. I'm gonna throw this mug at the, maybe I won't do the mug. Okay, it's gotta stick to the bends. Okay, lastly, one other thing I forgot to mention. I actually forgot to mention this on the Baruch Levine podcast. We have on Living L'Chaim, audio only, the spirit of the song with Rav Dani Kunzler. It's five to 10 minutes, episodes bringing you the purpose. Why did someone actually write the song? What's the meaning behind the words? It is an incredible show. Go ahead and check it out. There's a link in the show notes and you will love Rav Dani's podcast. He speaks to wonderful singers and composers and writers and it will change your life. Living L'chaim.